So my name is Annika Lidinge. I've been working with um, Bridging the Gap in um, the county of Blekinge. And in Blekinge we have eight project areas, as you can see on this map. In total, it was about 400 hectares um, in Blekinge. And I'm going to give you some examples from two of these areas, uh, Hagle and Tromte. Hagle is the larger island here, and Tromte here. Hagle is a nature 2000 area, and Tromte is uh, also a nature reserve. And the areas on Tromte are located both on the mainland and also on three islands, eastern and western Råholmen and Ringholmen. Um, the Tromte area is one of the most important areas in the country, uh, according to veteran trees, saprocylic beetles, uh, fungi and lichens. And the areas that were included in this project were poorly grazed or not grazed at all for a very long time before the project started. So the overgrowing was quite dense. And the fact that some of these areas are located on islands make the restoration quite tricky. Um, and a thorough planning and uh, effective uh, logistics was needed. Um, on this picture uh, above you can see um, the mainland of Tromte. Uh, the overgrown ve vegetation here was mainly larger trees, um, mostly beech, but also younger shoots um, from um, common hornbeam, avenbok. Um, and on the pictures below are from uh, Western Roholman and Hagle. And the overgrown ve vegetation on the islands of Tromte was also uh, larger trees, mostly beech, but on Hagle it was mostly juniper. And since, the, uh, um, since it was so dense on the mainland Tromte, the restoration was done in um, two occasions. One, the first one in 2017, when the closest trees around the trees closest to the veteran trees were removed and a second cutting in 2020. And the restoration of the islands were the, pl the planning of the restoration was started several years be before it was ex executed since at first we had some problems with the um, appealed procurements överklagade upphandlingar and when that was settled it was too late in the season and the raining made the ground wet, so it, uh, the risk of damage was too great. But uh, the third year, 2020, we were successful and the restoration was done. And we also had a great deal, deal of luck with the weather. So on the islands, the cutting was done manually. And then we had a flat boat that um, transported a forwarder and a wood shipping machine to the islands. And the wood shipping was done directly in the areas, but also on um, larger open areas where it was possible to put uh, more material. And then the flatboat transported the wood ships to in containers to Karlskrona. On the mainland, Tromte, the restoration was easier since it was on the mainland, but it was only accessible at one place. And also a lot of precaution is needed since there are so many veteran trees and a lot of old dead wood in the area. Here are some before after picture. pictures. You can see Jonas. Uh, in the first one, I think. <laughs> yeah. um, so on Tromte, we have done repeated cutting of regrowing vegetation for several years. Uh, and now after 
three to four years, it's under control. Uh, on Hagle, there was almost no regrowing vegetation at all since it was mostly juniper that was cut. So the result on Hagle was uh, quite good almost immediately, immediately after the restoration. It might be a risky thing to do too much in one restoration in areas that uh, have been overgrown for such a long time. Um, here you can see from mainland, mainland Tromte, you can see on the trees the effect of the overgrowing since the lower branches on the trees have been lost. But you can also see new shoots growing out on the trunks as a result from the clearing. There are a few trees that have fallen after the restoration. Some of them are lying in the same direction, as you can see here, from, from north to the south. And winds from this direction is quite, uh, mo it's more unusual in this part of the country. But there were a couple of storms from the north uh, the years after the restoration. But in the same time, these trees were either dead or infected with robust brackets, ektika. So the root system or the trunks were weakened from the beginning. And also a few trees have broken on the middle, um, probably because the lower branches were lost or dead, and then the um, strain on the trunk uh, from wind due to the more open surroundings are greater. So it's a larger risk of breaking. Overall, about five to ten trees have fallen or broken in this area after the restoration. But we consider that quite normal in an area of this size, about 48 hectares. And in my last slide, I'm going to show you a a uh, short film from Tromte and invite you all to visit since it's really beautiful, especially now after the restoration and this time of year. Who's at the port? Måste jag den också? Mm -hmm. Okej, okay, så so I represent the county administration of Kalmar. That is the county that is sort of in between of Östergötland and Blekinge in the southeast Sweden. And we have also <coughs> had a lot to do. So about 400 hectares in nine areas or actually eight areas because in one area the only action was to reintroduce ceramic sado. Um, so there have been very, uh, very much to do and uh, also a lot of discussions both between um, uh, within our uh, county administration but also with um, people living next to the areas and so on. Uh, one of the big problems that we have had is this uh, problems with the dieback of, of uh, several uh, deciduous tree species. That is, uh, of course, the, um, the dieback of ash, but also we have three uh, different species of elm. And uh, the, um, this produces a lot of dead wood, of course, and you have to handle that when you do this restoration. And we have at different measures uh, within the areas and also between areas. Uh, for example, when we restore uh, former meadows, then we uh, sort of pile these dead ash trees in large piles uh, so we could get areas that we could 
mow later on. So we have had two areas, uh, I think in total, not that two, 12, he 12 hectares that was uh, totally overgrown. And um, I think it's important when you do this restoration that you think about uh, two terms. The first term is long term. And uh, the, the other one is to um, uh, be uh, slow. <laughs> so you, you do uh, your restoration actions several times within a time period of 20 years or so. So don't think that you should do everything at the beginning. Uh, we have also reintroduced grazing in quite large areas. Uh, I think uh, the largest is about 80 hectares and uh, we have some areas with 40 hectares also. Uh, and that is of course um, interesting now to see the development but I think also you have to realize that you have to do some uh, um, yeah, you have to deal with the regrowth, not just to uh, hope for the cows to do everything. Uh, we have also had some new management experience, of course, in this project. And that, uh, that is, uh, we haven't uh, dealt with uh, plantation so much. And when we have uh, dealt with the plantation, we have used uh, former acres. That was sort of of new no use in the protected areas before. And we plan for these areas to be mowed again and we, that we could have oak trees that can be really um, large in diameters, both of the crown and the stem. And then as we will look upon much more tomorrow, we will have introduced veteranization as a sort of normal method in the restoration process and also the use of wood mold boxes where it is needed I would add because there are of course some areas that has the lucky um, um, state that you don't have to use wood mold boxes because you have already enough uh, hollow trees but they are as Vicky said before very few uh, sometimes you get some unexpected problems that you have to deal with uh, and then you do that of course. Which action? <laughs> yeah, we had uh, to do um, a new action there. C6. <laughs> yeah. taking, away, uh, taking away old cars. <coughs> Yeah, I think uh, that uh, our um, work have, have also increased our cooperation with landowners and contractors and farmers. And also we have uh, had um, special money in the application and we have needed that sometimes to uh, use archaeologists to give uh, advice on how to treat our cultural heritage. And that is not only our biological cultural heritage but also other. And uh, that is another thing that I would like to stress that is uh, that how, how to deal with this bioenergy <coughs> and shipping of woods. Uh, it's very important that you don't uh, create traps so that you let this, as it is for a beetle dead wood, uh, be lying out in the summertime because then you create traps for many threatened, threatened species uh, like this Pyridium sanguineum that you can see here. It's a very beautiful little beetle living in newly dead wood of oak. And in Sweden we have uh, more than 100 species of uh, beetles that can live in oak wood that is up to 20 centimeters in diameter. And we have many in our areas in, in Kalmar County, we have many of the species that you can only find in the Nordic countries in our areas. So for us it has been especially important to do this um, in a proper way. And that the proper way is to cut the trees after the summer 
and to ship them before the next generation of beetles emerge. That is, before the 1st of April in Sweden. So that uh, takes that you, you also have to plan this. And that this is one of the, the worst thing to plan is to, when the entrepreneur that are going to ship the woods will arrive. <laughs> so you have to have a system for that, that you can really get them there in time. And another thing that we have, have been uh, quite bad at in Swedish conservation is monitoring. And I think that is a good thing with these live projects that you could do proper monitoring. And we will talk about that later also. But um, we have been looking a little bit about what uh, colonizes this um, sort of um, fire scar, no, no, not fire scars, what is it called? Ignition, what? scars? Lightning. Lightning scars, yeah. Uh, and here you can see uh, um, a beetle that has colonized in the, in the mid picture here, that has colonized uh, the sort of sun exposed dead wood. It's uh, Lumexilon Navale. I don't know the English name if there is anyone. Uh, so um, uh, you could also see that there are species living in these hollows after the beetle has emerged. And also on the right side, you can see a five year old. Uh, box and we will talk about that also tomorrow in the field, what we have found there. So I think I stop there. Okay. Thank you very much.